Good morning, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. This is Pastor Lau. I want to bring my greetings to you from Hong Kong. Some of you have known that Mrs. Lau and I have gone to Hong Kong in February second. After twenty-one days of quarantine in the hotel, we are now home and plan to take care of my dad's funeral matter. When I rush back to Hong Kong, I got the news from my family that it is said my dad was under critical condition. So as we arrived, after a few days, God took him into heaven in glory. I thank God for all your prayer, your care and love. God has enough grace to me. At least I was able to visit my dad in the hospital while I was under quarantine. He made such impossible to be possible. We supposed not to allow to go out of the hotel during the quarantine. Otherwise, we will put in jail for six months and be fined for about thirty thousand U.S. dollars. But God still. Opened the door for me to see my dad the day before he passed away, and also the day when he's gone. It's an amazing and rich blessings from God. I always feel sorry when I can't see my dad in the last moment, so I pray and pray. God answered my prayer. Anyway, long story short. I will share more with you when I return to the states. Please continue to keep us in your prayer. And my dad's funeral service will be held <clears throat> on March six. That means this Saturday. So we ask God to bless the whole service and send the right message to、uh, for those who have not heard the faithful Lord, our Savior Jesus Christ. I think it is an excellent chance to share the gospel with the people while we are facing the life and death matter. So God bless you all. May God enrich us with the message of the Lent season. Jesus, who died for us to forgive our sins and to give us eternal hope. Amen. Good morning, everyone. It's Anson again. Welcome to LCHS in San Francisco. Today is February twenty eighth, and we're so glad you can join us online. Let's take a look at our announcements for today. We are on our twelfth day of our All Church Lenten devotional. If you'd like to join us, feel free to scan the QR code, and may God's word guide and encourage you in this season of Lent. Check out different uplifting comments from various friends and church members in the Talk It Over section. For our middle school and high schoolers, DC Allen will be starting a Sunday school series on the fruit of the spirit, beginning today at 11 a.m. via Zoom. Feel free to join by scanning the QR code here. March 7th is Holy Communion. EM members are welcome to join us for Holy Communion after service next Sunday via Zoom. Please prepare the physical elements of communion and your hearts by refocusing on God's promises of forgiveness and strength. On Friday, March twelfth, we'll be hosting a special workshop through Zoom to discuss some COVID nineteen vaccine myths and facts with Dr. Tom Lee and our pastors. This workshop will be in English and will take place from eight to nine thirty p.m. Let's hear from Elder Tom Lee. Hello there. Have you ever wondered how a vaccine works? Are you confused about all the information that's being circulated? About the vaccine, and what does the vaccine has to do with the Bible? Well, then join us on March twelfth, and we'll answer this and all the other questions using scientific facts, as well as from the biblical perspective. So we'll see you then. As we've mentioned last week, two Sundays from now on March fourteenth. We invite all LCHS members and attendees to join our yearly all-church meeting to gather for updates, 
finance reports, and voting items from 11 to 12.30 p.m. Kids worship and all Sunday school Zooms will not be meeting that day. For the past few weeks, you've been hearing from some of our pastoral staff and some of the visions we have for our faith community. We heard from DCE Allen, who shared from Acts chapter 2 and what it means for our church moving forward to have all aspiring ministries that bring people together. Pastor Chris shared about the mindset that God is above all and the skill set given to us by the Holy Spirit and using our tool set to create new spaces together. Today, we'll be hearing from DCE Ashley. Hi everyone, I'm on the third floor on our church balcony. And depending on which part of the church building you're in, you see things very differently. Likewise, the word church brings about many different images and perceptions as well. We all carry imperfect perceptions of our local churches, but for first century Christians, the word church wasn't referencing a building, a location, or emotions that people had. It was referencing the body of believers who would gather in fellowship, people who lived according to Jesus' ways. Today, I wanna to invite you to consider in the gospel, the Great Commission, the words that Jesus gave his disciples as he set the church in motion. This is from Matthew 28, and Jesus commissioned his disciples to go into the world and to be part of God's mission, what we call the Missio Dei. And it says, and Jesus says to them to go and make disciples. And he didn't just tell them to go out of nowhere. Jesus told them um, after empowering them for three years, they spent time day in and day out and they lived life together. And Jesus wanted them to be ready for the moment where he would commission them to go out into the world, to be the startup team for God's greater purpose for the world. I wanna talk about today, a few things that God has put on my heart during this pandemic season. I believe God is calling us as his disciples to also go out. The first part of the Great Commission is a verb. It's time to get moving and get out of our comfort zones, just like the disciples when he told them to leave Jerusalem, to not just keep everything that they have learned from Jesus to be good followers in their own little circles, but Jesus wanted them to step out. Likewise, during this season where we've been sheltering in place for so long, I believe Jesus is calling us to also get up and to move, to reach out. I think if there was a season to pause and to stop and to really reflect and be safe, but God is also reminding us um, now that a new season is coming. We still should be safe, but I believe Jesus is calling us to not let the pandemic rob us of remembering that God calls us to something greater. And whether it's thinking of new ways to meet our families where they're at, we know that the church isn't confined to a building. We've seen it this past year where we haven't met in the church building, but we are still a church. And I pray that we can cultivate fellowship in outdoor spaces near you guys this year. We've been in a season where God met us in our homes and he still is with us wherever we go, but we hope that you will step out and rediscover who he is in spirit-filled spaces. The second part is to make disciples coming from relationship. I mean, nowadays, how do we make disciples if people don't wanna be discipled by us? The thing is, in our world with so much noise, what is different or life-giving about what we're going to say to these potential disciples? People don't really care until they know that you care. So how can we as a body of Christ show love and care to the point where others are interested in what the Holy Spirit has to say through us? I believe part of loving and caring is to listen well. To listen well to God's words of truths, promises, and warnings, but then to listen to those around us, not just in our families, but all the people that we've been disconnected with in our community the past year. How are we going to listen to their stories 
or to their pain and loneliness, or maybe on the amazing things that we've missed out on in each other's lives. Don't let sheltering in place rob us of remembering that God created us for a greater community. And the last one is to be in the presence of Christ. This past year, I was able to fellowship with many of you guys in different ways, whether it was online or in your homes or outside in your yard. And I thought that was church to me. Being able to talk and pray with you guys in your home spaces, um, through a screen or over the phone, to me, it was allowing God's love to fill the space between us. And all of that was only possible because God was there. All of those moments of church and glimpses of church and gathering in, in the spirit was only possible because it was inviting Christ to be present. And spending time with your kids was reminding me that church is a day-to-day, moment-to-moment life togetherness. Um, when we started up our after-school program again or our Zoom fellowships, it was constant. And I realized that when you don't meet for a day or two or a week or two, people feel very disconnected. So we can't give up meeting. And the pandemic season has a lot of different challenges and transitions, but we can't give up meeting together in the presence of Christ. And I pray that we'll see the last part of the Great Commission when Jesus says that he will be with his disciples to the very end of the age, that likewise, he is with us no matter what happens, no matter what context we're in. And whether it's a space of meeting new friends or fellowshipping with the body of Christ or resolving conflicts or tension, Jesus meets us there and he promises to be present. So again, I wanna invite you for 2021 to join us to go out, to step out, to make disciples through building solid relationships and to dwell in Christ's presence. Today, we will pray for an increased level of generosity in our church, and also that in confessing our failures and weaknesses, we may be restored like the high priest Joshua for serving God. Also for wisdom and love as our church designs worship spaces on our church property. And lastly, for godly peace as we hear about the progression of the pandemic and consider how we will interact with one another again someday. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. God, that there's nothing that is beyond you and there's nothing that overwhelms you or surprises you. And so God, we just pray that you would continue to be the Lord of our lives and of this church as we move forward with the many things ahead of us. God, we pray for this family that we would continue to grow in generosity, that we would give from the abundance that you have given us, that freely we have received and so freely we would give. And God, as we recognize and confess our failures, God, we pray that you would restore us into our position as high priests, just as you did to Joshua. God, that you would anoint us and that you would cleanse us and purify us to be holy like you are holy and then to serve you and your people. God, we also pray for wisdom and that you would teach us how to love our neighbors as we consider how to transform some of our, the spaces in church and how to have protocols to keep everyone safe so that when we can gather again, we can do so safely and humbly. Um, as we design God, the spaces and protocols, we pray for wisdom for our leaders. And lastly, God, we pray that as we hear the news and see all these things going on, that you would continue to give us peace that surpasses understanding and that guards our hearts. Um, and God, that you would teach us even how to interact with one another again. Um, it, we're looking forward to the times, God, when we can gather again in person um, safely. And we pray that you would guide us through this transition and that you would teach us um, how to love and to serve one another well. And Lord, make us one as we pray the prayer that you taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth 
as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.